the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, has come up with, I think, is one of the most brilliant political strategies I've heard in a long time. He's sending hundreds of aliens who come into the country by bus to New York City, which is a sanctuary city, has really paid dividends to him politically. That was former New York Governor David Patterson, a Democrat, praising Texas Governor Greg Abbott's strategy to bus migrants in to New York City. This as yet another bus load of illegal immigrants pulled into the Big Apple about an hour ago. Joining me now, New York Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis. She's a member of the Transportation and Infrastructure and Foreign Affairs Committees. Congresswoman, you're holding a press conference uh, later today on the buses. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Because again, this is a sanctuary city. Yeah, well, what we want is our mayor and our governor to join our calls to secure the southern border, to, to stop the chaos, to let's restore order at the border, because we have none of that right now. You know, President Biden has fought uh, us very diligently, as a matter of fact, to stop the Remain in Mexico policy. He, he violated, you know, Supreme Court orders, and now he's doing away with it completely. And you have this influx of, you know, millions of people over the past uh, year and a half that have entered into our country, and we don't know where they're going necessarily because once they get on a bus or once they go and get on a plane uh, they don't return for their court dates and it's created a uh, sort of uh, chaos now here in New York our governor has incentivized illegal immigration free college tuition when when you have families here struggling if they earn hundred and twenty five thousand dollars or more they got to put three kids through college they get no assistance free health care, um, spending $220 million in this year's budget to provide free health care for illegal immigrants. We have senior citizens who are struggling to pay for their prescription drugs and their health care. So there is a disconnect here, and I hope the mayor and the governor do the right thing, because uh, they're saying it's going to be a burden onto our schools, our health care system, but will they join our calls to secure the border and let's have a process in place? You're doing that with Lee Zeldin, congressman who's running for governor, correct? That's correct. And, and Lee Zeldin uh, is, is actually, you know, look, Lee Zeldin said he will repeal the disastrous bail law that Kathy Hochul refuses to do. He will put American citizens before those who enter our country illegally when it comes to, you know, college tuition and health care. Uh, he has been somebody who is a stark contrast. Even, even, even the parole board that is releasing cop killers in our state, Lee Zeldin said that he will remake the parole board that is releasing over 30 cop killers, uh, in addition to murderers and serial rapists. He's going to put public safety of New Yorkers first when he gets elected. The criminals are the victims, the way that Democrats uh, have behaved. And then the victims are garbage to be thrown aside. And, and you also see, to your point, you see hardworking legal residents of New York City and New York State. They're treated like garbage when illegal migrants are welcomed with open arms and propped up and supported, um, again, with money that ultimately comes from the people who are here legally and working. Yeah, I mean, Kathy Hochul believes, uh, you know, law-abiding uh, citizens here in New York are only good for one thing, to pay the tab. Uh, $220 billion budget in this state, which is twice what the state of Florida's is, yet Florida has millions of more residents. And it's because they have all these programs and, and hand look, they even created a, a stimulus check program for those who are in the country illegally. Think about that. So, so if you were a, a single mother who earned, let's say, $90,000 and you have three kids to provide for, you received nothing. But under Kathy Hochul's New York, you were receiving uh, thousands of dollars in stimulus payments if you were in the country illegally. That is how backwards it has become, and we have one opportunity to fix it. It's this November. She was taking a shot at Governor DeSantis at a Holocaust event. That was last week. But that, that's where we are here in this state. I want to talk about the one year since Kabul fell, the one year anniversary that the Taliban secured its grip on Afghanistan. A new House GOP report from the Foreign Affairs Committee argues, quote, the choices made in the corridors of power in D.C. led to tragic yet avoidable outcomes. 13 dead service members, increased threats to our homeland security, tarnished standing abroad for years to come. The White House disputing the report, while another separate, highly classified report on the withdrawal is in its final stages, and an unclassified summary is expected to be released publicly. Congresswoman, how long will it take before we can recover from this disastrous 
Afghanistan withdrawal. Yeah, look, it was a year ago where we were seeing those images of the Taliban parading in the streets of Kabul with our equipment. That was like a punch in the gut. And quite frankly, it has hurt us on the international stage. I think somewhat what you're seeing with Russia uh, entering Ukraine and, and China uh, circling, the, circling Taiwan is due to the failures of what occurred there with this administration. And, you know, it was preventable. It was predictable what occurred. The intelligence community was saying that Kabul would fall, that Taliban would take over, and yet our president kept insisting that that was not the case. And now we are seeing the uh, al-Qaeda reemerging, uh, very troubling. And quite frankly, I don't know whose idea, but we want to get to the bottom and have somebody held accountable for deciding to close our military base without evacuating our citizens first, because that is how the ISIS fighter was able to attack and kill 13 of our American soldiers. And to this day, there's been zero accountability, and they refuse to come before our Foreign Affairs Committee and other committees to give the information that the American people want. And as Mike McCall has said, uh, who, who led this report, and I'm proud to be on this committee, that we will hold them accountable. We will investigate this. We will get answers for the American people. Should we take back the House in January? Because this has too many. We have to learn from this. Make sure it never happens again. But somebody needs to be held accountable for these disastrous decisions. Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis, thank you so much for being here. Terrific to see you as always. We'll see you thank again you. soon.